Well, uh, hello everybody coming in. We're, we're not, are we gonna, are we gonna wait till eight to sort of yeah. officially start the tour? Yes, but we we'll just, uh, we can, we can have a little chit chat while we're waiting for the people that uh, mm. were keen enough to tune in early. Of course, you can see that I'm actually broadcasting from the moon. Uh, so, and who have we got here? There's a lot of people I know. John Nangreaves. And you look cold, man. Fabian, Elsie, Andy. Andy, I haven't seen you forever. How are you doing, man? Some people I don't know. Mamie, hi. Where are you coming from? I did. You have to oh, unmute yourself right, to say sorry. hi. Who? Where's Mamie from? You have to. You have to unmute your microphone, Mamie. Yeah, from Halifax, Nova Scotia. Oh, okay, good. And uh, Afsha, where are you coming Actually, from? I'm from London, Ontario. Oh, nice. Are you a, a <laughs> member of the center there, the yeah. RESC? The London RASP, but I noticed this lunar observing one. And I was interested, so I thought I did. You me. did you happen to see the talk that my partner uh, Kathy uh, LeBlanc and I did uh, on the Micmac Moons back in I don't know June or something or July? No, I didn't. Okay. Is it recorded that, somewhere? It is. It's on. It's on the Micmac Moons. Very um, funny. The crater you can see next to it is the crater Werner. And the one beyond that is Aliensis. And those are the two craters you look for when you're looking for the lunar X. So there it is. And as I expected, it's uh, it's there right away at sunset. It's, uh, it, there's it's no interesting. Waiting. I'm further west and my X seems to be brighter. Um, well, I think it's just got to do with um, whatever brightness he's got set. Okay. So how come we can see John's, but we can't see Jerry's? Because that's just my uh, Your setup. screen. I can't really, sh I can't physically share the screen. I am. What were you doing yesterday then? Okay. Good question. Okay, John, that was nice. Uh, you can you can stop sharing now, so we can try to figure the rest out. Okay, I'm trying not to. I'm um, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, we can. I... Sorry. So, I was gonna... um, it seems that when I when I try to share, I think maybe my computer gets overwhelmed or something. I'm not sure. There's there's Peter Edwards. Got it. He's got, got it. Yes. <laughs> yep. I've got it here in town as well, Dave, if you want me to share my screen. Um, well, why not? Let's see what you got. <laughs> so how can we keep on switching to Peter? How come he keeps on popping? <laughs> he keeps on, is he making noise? Oh yeah, there's, is that Blair's? That's Blair's. Yeah, it looks good. I'll mute. There we go. Yeah, yeah. people who aren't uh, presenting should mute. Unless yeah, I, we, uh, yeah, that's good, Blair. Okay, just let me know when you want something. Um, uh, I guess we're waiting for Dave. Dave, I'm, no, I'm ready to go anytime. But we've done. We were here last night and got yeah. everything organized. So well, we can look at this for the time being and. Yeah, we're not for those on the phone on who are listening it doesn't actually start until eight o'clock so even though it's advertised. we're just killing time here yeah this is set up time some people well the zoom people were told 7 30 and i think uh the live stream to facebook is going to start at eight so we'll wait until eight to Can someone who's out there go to astronomy nova scotia I can do and that. See if there's see if it's going. It should be going there now. So welcome Ellen from Kitchener Waterloo or ask. Looks like we've got a few people from around the country, different uh, centers. I think we have yeah. more people from around the country than we have from Halifax. <laughs> Hi from uh, Kitchener indeed. Uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to tonight. Thank you for having me. I guess we did a good, um, good job letting people know, huh? 
Hello from Victoria, where it's uh, oh, that's Randy, and quite daytime. <laughs> now, Randy, Randy have finished doing there. his. I want to say something about Randy. Randy just finished doing his Isabel Williamson, right? You bet. Yeah, Randy did the Isabel Williamson. It is a wonderful program. I am yeah. so so thankful that you've set that up. Well, I didn't set it up. It's that's been yeah. around since 2006, but uh, yeah, so that the committee that the committee has set this up and yeah, has okay. Help people get to know this beautiful orb. Well, I'm Glenn Harris from the Prince George Center. Oh, hi Glenn. Here, How's it going? Good in British Columbia. Hey Glenn, you were uh, you were involved in setting up uh, Isabel Williamson, weren't you? I was uh, I was probably the first or second person after right. after it was uh, after it was done by the, uh, the people that originally uh, yeah developed. I remember it. your name. Were you were you an observing chair at one time as well? No, no, I wasn't. So but were I you? Also, I also did that uh, uh, Isabel Williamson uh, right challenge too so uh okay that was a long time ago <laughs> but were you not involved in setting up explore the universe um were you one of the people that did that no no okay well i, I recognize sent, your name <laughs> i sent it a lot of corrections as i as i went through the objects so uh, that was my contribution yes. well, to the all, isabel williamson program th there's always that so who are we looking at now are we looking at blair still yes can, can we brighten it up, Blair? Because it's uh, trying. Okay. While we're waiting, there's a prominent. Um, okay, well, there's a prominent um, trio of craters there. Um, Theophilus, Cyrillus, and Katerina, which really stand out. Sorry, this new version of Zoom, the uh, toolbar keeps disappearing on me. Ah. All right. Um, it looks like it looks like we're live, Dave Lane. Are we? Um, it um, says it's live, but I, I, it says the broadcast has been paused and will resume. Okay, shortly. I restarted it because I couldn't find it. Could you? Uh, I just hit. It should start back up again. Um, okay. It says we're having trouble playing this video. It should be going again. Um, yeah. I couldn't find it on the Astronomy Nova Scotia website. There's two people watching, but all I see is the, uh, you've got some kind of a screen, eh? Yeah, I just have live online explore the moon session featuring that's what should be going. Yeah, that's what that's what you have there. So. Right. And can you just turn the sound on and just see if you're hearing the Cuban music? <laughs> well, I've, I've got to take my headphones off now. Yeah. Yeah, I can hear the music, man. Okay. I, I hope I can find, uh, we need someone to monitor the chat. And I can't monitor if I can't find it. <laughs> we also have to share share the link too. Uh, why the heck, if I could use the word hell, I would. Uh, can't, when I go to Astronomy Nova Scotia, it should be right on the... So. Well, that's an interesting point. Is there somebody out there who's tuned in now who would be willing to volunteer to uh, follow the Astronomy Nova Scotia Facebook page and monitor any live chat that comes over there for questions? Anybody? I can't find it. I, I got it here. Well, how did I you find it? What? I can't find the feed on the Facebook page. Well, I don't know how I did it. I just see it. Um, I'll be monitoring the uh, Zoom chat for you, David. Thank you. Is, is there anyone else besides me who can see 
the live feed on the uh, Astronomy Nova Scotia Facebook page. Hello. Hi, anyone. Hey. Um, okay. 10 minutes and counting. Do I have to assign this to somebody? You need to go to videos. Go to Astronomy Nova Scotia and then videos. And there's not there. There it is, videos. <laughs> okay, there it is. Oh, that's beautiful music. Okay, so now I want to share this. Oh, Christine, to... Christine has commented on it. My wife, Christine, <laughs> she's seeing it. There's four viewers. That one of those must be me. And me now. And 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 Christine and you. So there's one other person. Oh, there's five now. So now I'm going to share it to groups. Um, I'm going to pick somebody out of the. Well, I I found it now, so I can monitor the chat once I just get this going here. Oh. Uh, you want to do that? Yeah. Uh, okay, you can do that then. Okay, so j just out of curiosity, before we get going, um, I've noted that there are uh, member people attending from Kingston, Ontario, Kitchener, Waterloo, London, Ontario, Victoria, and I think I missed another location from someone out west. Of course, it's uh, middle of the day out there. Yes. You missed Orleans. Missed what? Orleans, Orleans, oh. Ontario. Well, that's Ottawa. That's, that's yeah. essentially Ottawa. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. I offended anybody just there. But... <laughs> Not at all. Or as they say in French, Orléans. Yeah, I don't say that out here. <laughs> Most people uh, in Orleans probably speak English anyway. I used I to can't. live in Ottawa. That's where my family yeah. was. Can oh, you, 50, 50. Uh, Dave, Hello? can you go in, before we start here, go in and share? Because I, I can't share any of the groups. It's just, they're just not coming up. I don't know. What, what, what do you want me to do? Share the video uh, to RASC Halifax and Royal Astronomical Society of Canada, the main group. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll do that. Because it's I, I shared it to Astrophotography Nova Scotia because that it seemed to find that. Share to but, a group. Yeah. Share as Astronomy Nova Scotia to I only okay share as me. Oh, <laughs> oh I can go crazy here. Uh, robotic imaging, maritime vegetable and herb growers. Do you think they want to see it? I'm going to share it to. Uh, Intergalactic Astronomy Educators Fellowship Science Disseminators Group. That's you remember, you remember Carlos down at the Winter Star Party. Uh, yep. Yeah, he he runs that. So, so they're getting it, <laughs> whether they like it or not. Um, well, this is fun. We're taking over the. Uh, okay, can I share over the my screen, please? Yeah, let's let's let Dave is the guy who stepped forward to do this, so we should be. So Blair, um, can you unshare, please? Well, we've got five minutes to go, eh? Share to a group. What else? Uh, Visual astronomy. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna skip them. Blair, are you there? Ready to go. I should be sharing. Who okay, be? I shared to Rask, Halifax. Can you guys see my screen? Nope. Blair hasn't relinquished his. Well. Can't you turn them off? I'm I'm about to. Sorry, folks. I was just getting coffee. Ah, uh, there you go. Should be all done there now. Yep. And, so uh, so that's that's Dave Lane. Up. Yep, Dave's is up. Dave Lane. 
So we need to we need to shift over a bit, Dave uh, Lane, and we need a little a little boost in the brightness there. Yeah, I. One X. So Kim Hang Kingston is saying she is the lunar L and the X showing now. The lunar L or the lunar V? Well, she says L. Hey, well. Yeah, the V has been visible for a little while, uh, well up above the X there. I guess it depends which way you're looking at it. We're, we're getting a few comments on the uh, astrono Astronomy Nova Scotia. People like the music anyway. That would be, uh, if it's what I think it is, it's uh, my friends, my Cuban friends, uh, Son Del Rio, um, they gave me a bunch of music and uh, they do a few instrumentals. So that's what's playing for the people on listening on um, it's, it's, Facebook. Uh, it, it is, I have it one song on repeat, so it's not. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Kim has said L. L, it's L, yeah. okay. What am I looking for here? Uh, Okay, we've got two minutes to go before we go properly live. Mm -hmm. Whose dog is that? Um, this is going know, out to- I would like to, whoops. This is going out to the North Shore Erie amateur astronomers who are in, uh, Ontario in the tobacco growing area. It's now going to go out to the Queens County Astronomy Group. We're taking over the internet. Three minutes to go. Yeah, and are we, people are, are we, joining. There's more coming in. Are, are we doing a countdown like in uh, rocket launches or? <laughs> Something like that. Okay, last mm -hmm. one, Royal Astronomical Society of Canada group. I suppose I should post it to uh, RESD since two of us are members. Is there a limit as to how much you can uh, broadcast this in terms of? On Facebook? Yeah. We'll, we'll learn, we'll, <laughs> we'll, well find I out. I just want to make sure that Astronomy Nova Scotia is covered. That's all my concern. Oh, it's, it's definitely covered. Yeah, because it doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, we should probably be, you know, one place we're not doing this is YouTube, YouTube RESC. We, we should, uh, anyway, I'm not going to bother with that now. We're almost going live. Now, how do you do that fancy thing where we look at Dave's and... Uh, Jerry's at the same time. Um, that I can do. I don't know that we can look at Jerry's at the same time. We'd be able to look at. We were we were yesterday. Yeah, I have to change it to. He has to become. There he is. Is that it there? So I'm going to turn off my camera because I don't need to have my camera going. Okay, it's, I think we're ready to go, Ju Judy. Do you want to? Well, it's two minutes too, so let's just. Not on my computer. Minutes. What computer you got? It's... Pardon me. Oh, why? I got one computer. One of my computers is two minutes ahead. How did that happen? Don't know, but it's one minute now. <laughs> okay, I'll go by your clock then. Turn down the title text. We got the zoom. So before we go live, I have a, a joke for the people that have uh, 
have tuned in early. This is uh, so the question is, have you heard about the restaurant on the moon? No? Great food, no atmosphere. You may have to get a new joke, Dave. You, you get tired of that one? Uh, uh, Cheryl well. Jeffers laughed at it and she lives up the street. So I'm taking that. I'm gonna. <laughs> there you go. All right, well, it is now eight o'clock, Dave. So hey, just let me switch. Sorry? Screen. I'm gonna switch the Facebook screens and then the sound should work. And someone should verify on Facebook that they can hear. I guess I'll turn it on to make sure that well, the sound comes. We through. know that we know that the sound works, Dave. We no, just but not work. not oh. this way. That, okay. Okay. I've just made the switch. We are live on Facebook. I think there's eleven people watching. Well, it doesn't take eleven. It's just a, just delayed, so you don't have to worry about it. Oh, I know. Switch. We are live on Facebook. Okay, so two seconds, I think. can the yeah. Facebook be? Uh, it's, I, I can hear the audio, but the music isn't playing. I think I, Sorry. the music is not playing. That's correct. Okay, that's, that's planned. Okay, take it away, Judy. All right, so we're ready to rock and roll. Yep. Wonderful. So, welcome everyone to Rask Halifax Center. Uh, this is another evening of looking at the moon close up. Uh, we're hoping to explore the moon give some people an idea of uh, some of the objects that are out there that they can, uh, and keep in mind, this cannot be included for your Explore the Moon certificate, but this will give no you way. where to look. Um, the Lunar X, as you can see, is featured on our screen. I'd like to welcome people from across the country, everywhere from Victoria, Kingston, Ontario, Kitchener, Waterloo, London. Uh, Prince George. Ottawa, just outside of Ottawa, for those of you that don't know where that is. Um, so welcome everyone. Uh, tonight, uh, our host, or actually our, our guide on the moon, is Dave Chapman. He is currently sitting as our observing chair, and he is serving on the, is it the observing committee as well, Dave? National? Yeah, the, the observing committee of the RESC. I'm a member yes. and former um, uh, chair. Right. And Dave is what we refer to as our resident lunar tick. Uh, so... I'll let you take it away, Dave. Okay, well, thanks so much, Judy, for that introduction. Um, and welcome everyone from me. Uh, I'd like to say a few words about my connection with all of this. And uh, uh, what's that there? Get rid of that. Okay. So there's, there's two things um, about this is that we're promoting uh, obviously lunar observing and the explore the moon uh, observing certificate. Um, and the other thing is the lunar X. We, we chose this night um, when I noticed that the lunar X would be on view. And uh, so um, my connection with the lunar X, I think I should explain that. Uh, uh, I have a connection with it. I did not discover it. I've, I don't claim to have discovered it because it's something that it shows up every lunation to somebody if they're looking. Uh, but it wasn't really well known until, um, gosh, almost 20 years ago. And I'll tell you the brief version of the story. I went out, we were at the uh, Nova East Star Party in 2004, and it was uh, in late August. And we had had a terrible weekend. The Friday and Saturday night were both rainy. We didn't do any observing. We woke up Sunday night, Sunday morning, and it was clear, and it was promised to be clear that night. Uh, but a lot of people had to leave because they had work to go to and stuff like that. But uh, about a third of us stayed, including me, Sunday night. And it was a beautiful night. And as it got dark, the moon was about the phase it is now, uh, around first quarter. And... I was setting up my telescope and I trained my telescope on the moon and I saw this X. Now I wasn't zoomed in as much as we see here, but what I saw was the moon almost the first quarter. And I saw this brilliant X 
in the dark side of the moon. And so what we're seeing here in the in the view is that is the moon the 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 line the very irregular line between light and dark is called the terminator, and that is the point on the moon where the sun is rising. So on the right side of the screen. It's already morning on the moon, and on the left side of the screen, it's still night. Um, because there's no atmosphere on the moon, it's a very distinct transition. There's no in between. Um, it's it's either light or dark. So I saw this X, and I got very excited and uh, roused a bunch of people to look at it. Uh, Tony Jones took a photograph, and I started. Um, looking around after I got home to find out if anyone knew anything about this and I couldn't find anything about it. But gradually uh, some information emerged and um, uh, somebody came up with a picture of it that had been taken a few months earlier. And um, anyway, uh, that was uh, in 2004. And ever since then, uh, it's gotten more and more popular and interesting. Uh, there is an article that I wrote for the journal of the RESC, and I'll when I find it soon, I'll put up a link to it that that tells you everything about the lunar X, but we're afraid to ask. But it's gotten more and more popular, so there's a lot of magazine articles about viewing it, a lot of people uh, just going out observing or having a star party come across it by accident. Anyway, we're lucky tonight that we have a good view of it here. Um, so that's my connection with the Lunar X. Um, the crater that's closest to it, well, that you can see anyway, is called the Werner. Uh, there's, yeah. a, there's actually a crater next to it. That one there, yeah, that's Werner. Uh, I, I think the one just north of it, which is all mostly in shadow, is Verbach. Although mm -hmm. I have to check that. Um, Dave, uh, you might want to just make or I'll make an announcement since I can. Uh, we're those of you who are on Zoom, be aware that we are self we are simultaneously broadcasting this on Facebook. All right. So if you don't want your image to appear on Facebook, turn off your video um, because it is it could appear. Uh, simulcast depending on whether you're on the, the first page of four that are, is showing there. So I'll just uh, leave it at that. Okay, yeah. I guess that's a, a kind of warning. Yeah, just a, a disclosure. So, yeah, so I was saying that the X, the, the crater that was filled in, it's actually Blanchinus, which is the one that's right above Werner. And Perbach is actually to the left of the X, and it's totally in shadow, except for two arms of the X as the crater walls of Perbach. And there's another crater north of it called La Kyle. So I'll explain what's happening here. So there's, there's essentially there's three or four craters all jammed up next to one another. And the sun is just rising at this point. And like it does on Earth, where there's mountains, the sun is catching the tops of the mountains while the valleys are still in darkness. And, you know, this happens on earth. You know, if, you're, if you've ever been in a mountainous area, the sun comes up and you're in the valley and there's no sun for a long time, but you can see the, the peaks of the mountains. And this is exactly what's going on here. The, the X are, is just walls of craters that happen to be arranged in that way. And the light is catching, the sunlight is catching the tops of those. Uh, a couple of hours ago, you wouldn't have been able to see it. And um, it, it starts out looking like a little bar and then it turns into a T and then it turns into an X. And there's actually a tiny crater. I, I think you can see it. There's actually a tiny crater in the middle, which I don't even know has a name. Uh, it might be a secondary crater of La Cai. Um, you can sort of see it there. It's a little crater. Um, and as the Dave, sun if rises, you to, if you want me to point things out with my cursor here, uh, can you can you see the little crater at the middle of the X there? Uh, you mean if I zoom in? Oh, we don't have to zoom in. Whoa. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I moved. You moved. 
right? There we are. There you go. So there's a tiny little crater there where the other crater walls intersect in the center. Yeah, yeah, there you go. See it Like there? right in there? Or? Yeah, yeah, there's a oh. tiny crater there. It's on my map. I don't know if it has a name. Unfortunately, if, my cursor is not showing on the Facebook. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, no, if any, is, if anyone is. has a um, Rukal Atlas handy, they could flip to the right page and see if that crater has a name. I don't think it has a proper name of its own. It's probably a secondary crater of Lakai or one of the others. And it's it'll just have a letter like Lakai C or something. Uh, Randy Enkin is saying that it's on the Rukul 55 map. It doesn't have a name. So I think we should name it. Maybe we should send in a, a, a note to somebody. We have a Facebook question. Yeah. Does the X disappear when the crater is illuminated? That is correct. Uh, I was just getting to that. Uh, so what happens is eventually the sun will rise more and the valleys and the floors of the craters will fill in with light. And so the X as we see it now will disappear. You will still see the topography which forms the X. Uh, you'll be able to pick it out, but, but it won't have this stark contrast with the black background. This is gonna last for about an hour and then it's gonna disappear. So, and this is one of the reasons why it's not so well known because it, it kind of comes and goes in an hour. So you have to be in the right place on earth so that you can see the moon at that time. If you were at another location, you would miss it. Uh, so for instance, if you happen to be in um, somewhere in Asia, like China or somewhere now, like it would be daytime there and the moon wouldn't even be in the sky. And so when it comes around to the next night there, it'll be gone. And last night it wouldn't have been there. So, so you have to be at the right longitude to see it. And you can only see it for about an hour. And if we looked again next month, we wouldn't be able to see it. And the reason is the time between when the Terminator passes by the same point on the moon is 29 and a half days. And that extra half day means that uh, when it's when it's happening next month, it'll be on. You'd have to see it from the other side of the world. In other words, the, the people in China would be able to see it, and we wouldn't be able to see it. So it, it takes at least two months before it comes around again. Uh, and I think that's one of the reasons it's not that well known, because you'd notice it, and then you'd look again another time, and you wouldn't see it. And so, even if somebody noticed it, they might not think about it. Um, the other point about this is when I noticed it and started talking about it, the internet was very active. There were, you know, there were things like cloudy nights and, and different forums and uh, communication was almost instant. So when I started asking about it, uh, there was a, a, a lot of interest in it and it kind of grew, grew from there. Um, and nowadays, uh, you, you know, you can uh, Google Lunar X and find uh, Wikipedia articles and uh, you might be able to find um, posts on different lunar forums where people predict the times that it'll appear, which because it's, it's very predictable because it's, it's just got to do with the uh, um, longitude of the Terminator, which there's formulas for. The question is, will you be able to see it? When, when it occurs, that's the thing. And uh, sometimes you can see it once and you might, if you're lucky, you'll see it another, uh, two months later and then you might not be able to see it for eight, eight or 10 months before you, it comes around um, to the, where you can see it from the same place, so. I have a planted question for you. <laughs> Well, I'm going to plant a question. How, uh, so the X, how big, how physically big is the X? Oh boy. Uh, well, it looks about the same size as Werner. Uh, and my memory is, this is where somebody like John Nangreaves or somebody has to look up in a book. I'm going to say that it's around a hundred kilometers across. I'm not good yeah. at remembering numbers, but if anybody, if somebody could look that up. What I'm going to do is, uh, is I'm going to go off and, and count the, the number of pixels. 
and I know how big each pixel is in angle, and we know how far away the moon is. Well, that's pretty nerdy. So we can figure out by <laughs> by actually measuring it. Okay. So we can Werner is seventy point oh. five nine kilometers across. Uh, yeah, what's a few tens of kilometers between friends? <laughs> okay, I will. Uh, I will get back to you. Are we going to be able to show uh, Jerry's view? Uh, I think so. So I should be able to. Can we include him or can we switch over? Because he's yeah. gone to so much trouble getting it just right. Yeah, I can. Uh, let me just count the pixels first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. Oh, I'm Amelia. That's about 20 woods, about 18 pixels. Okay, so I will just make the mini Ralph go away and this big. And I think, uh, has Jerry been made a host or a, a co-host or something? Because I, I, well, I can't have, really, I can't really. Uh... Can't share your screen, but how do I make that uh, in Zoom? How can you make that person the speaker somehow so that it, you know, I can't seem to. What were, what were we doing yesterday? I don't know. Uh, that's that's me. It's a mystery. Uh, it's a mystery. I mean, uh, how do I? I guess if I go full screen, Just let's second. see if I go. Well, if I stop my screen sharing, first of all, stop the screen sharing. All right, and I'll see what I can do about. Because normally, even Dave, you, uh, when you were speaking, normally it would show here to speaker view. Okay, that's better. So now if you make him a speaker, I will go outside and uh, speak. How's that? If that's if that's what you have to do, I guess that's you have to take one for the do. you have yeah. to take one for the team, Jerry. All right, we'll see what happens. So I will share this my screen again so that that will. No, you're on no, Facebook. Don't don't share your screen. That will okay. Uh, that'll mess it up. Yeah, um, but what I'm trying to do is. Um, I have an estimate so that of that. about 75 miles. Pardon me? Across the X. <laughs> We've had we talked about this before, John. If you're gonna if you if you're gonna yeah. use Imperial units, we're gonna kick you off. Okay, I'm here. Can you uh can oh there's you hear me? Yeah, there, there's some kind of kidney bean thing going on, but uh yeah. Is that your your um there's a I've, iPhone uh, or something your, there now. Your next your off. next YZ. Um yeah, yeah. you'll yeah. see the lunar X. I can see it. Yeah, I just can't make that for so, some reason. I, I can't make that okay. so I can size. see I can How's see that? Jerry's. Now I have to explain to the viewers that Jerry's Jerry has an extra reflection in his optical chain. And so the, the view we're seeing of the X in this case. Uh, is still north and south, uh, up and down, but it's left, right, reversed. Okay, so now the Jerry has loop, to talk. Yeah, so or, if you or or other people have to not talk. Maybe um, it, it was okay, okay I when will, I was talking. Okay, I will try talking, and uh, we'll see if that siren in the background uh, well, also was, helped. It seemed okay when I was talking. It was still. Okay, just leave it like that. Uh, where was I? So you'll now see that the left-hand side is illuminated. So that is uh, actually east on the moon. And now the right, right-hand side is dark. So this is a mirror reversed view, which is makes sense because Jerry is using a schmidt cassegrain with a star diagonal. So if you have a schmidt cassegrain with a star diagonal or a refractor with a star diagonal, this is the view you would see of the moon. Uh, it, it's 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 uh, left right reversed. Okay, uh, Dave, we're only seeing you at this point, so that means for Jerry's view to be seen. Uh, That's funny. When I was talking, I could see Jerry's camera. So, but it's not the main screen. 
Okay, I will talk for a little bit. Can you hear me? And am I the main speaker screen now? Yes. Okay. So any, <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll talk again. The, uh, so the only interesting thing, this is not a particularly useful approach because in fact, it's not really uh, computer controlled. I haven't got really any control over the image other than it is uh, notable and that it's an iPhone attached to through a Celestron XYZ uh, phone adapter onto uh, a uh, 4.7 millimeter eyepiece with a 2,500 millimeter uh, 10 inch mead SCT. So it seems to produce a pretty nice uh, balanced uh, auto auto balanced uh, image and uh, is keeping itself fairly in focus. Anyway, uh, other than that, it's uh, hard to make it the, the main screen, which is its main drawback. Yeah. Well, we were doing it yesterday. Anyway, never mind. Yeah, no, I have it. I figured out what I need to do. Uh, I can, uh, on my screen share, I can pin his video. And what had happened was I had you pinned because you were talking, so it oh. was not displaying him. Well, I think people are tired of looking at me, so. Right now he's shaking the telescope. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry about that. That better? Yep. I was trying to get rid of that uh, internal reflection there. But... You can see a slight blue hinge, uh, blue tinge. I think that's uh, some sort of reflection happening. At the risk of um, knocking Jerry off the screen, I'm going to say this, and then we'll go back and watch him. Uh, you can start. You can start to see the surroundings of the X filling in now. There's some more peaks illuminating. Yeah, so uh, have you seen enough of this, this approach? We've, we've explained it's left, right, and... Uh, yes, uh, I just wanted to say while we're talking about that, this is very important if you're going to observe the moon and, uh, record, and um, do your Explore the Moon um, program. You need to have the right kind of map uh, according to what optics you have. So you have to figure out if you have um, a Newtonian telescope or a, a, a telescope with a, a diagonal that flips the image and, or so on. Uh, if you start with the wrong kind of map, you'll get lost. So you, you have to figure that out. Um, for a Newtonian reflector, it'll appear like 180 degrees re uh, uh, turned around, uh, which is easy because you just take the map and turn it around. But uh, if you have a an extra reflection in there from a star diagonal, it'll flip it uh, mirror left, right, and no amount of uh, turning the map will make it look right. That's why in Explore the Universe, we have two sets of maps. And so you have to be mindful of that when you do the, your observing. And if you have any other kind of chart, you have to be mindful of that. And, and also to note, Dave, that when the various um, uh, astronomy programs as well allow you to be able to flip it like that because of what you're viewing through? You mean like the... Like for instance... Um, the, the apps? And that? Yes, the apps will, will allow you to, to flip the... the yes, that is that is true. I use Moon Atlas and it, yes. you can flip it all, all which way around. Uh, true. And I mean, I have two, just to, for people's edification, I've got two versions of sky and telescopes maps. One is the regular one, but then there's the other one that I have to use with my SCT, which is the mirror image one. And so I don't know if they're available anymore, but... Um, well, they, they are from time to time. Yeah. They're not that expensive. No. And the and the artwork on them is actually done by Anton Ruckel. So if you don't have a Ruckel Atlas, the Sky and Telescope maps are uh, the next best thing. So is um, do you, can you see if... Um, is John Reed uh, logged in on? Yes, he is. Do I, do I just need to talk and then I'll show up at the... Uh... Yeah, hi, John. There you are, John. Hi. I'd, I'd like to introduce John. Uh, so John is a friend and a member. Um, 
I guess we met about five years ago at a, at the Nova East star party. And I saw right away that he was a special kind of guy. Cause uh, does, he he, ha does he have his video? Oh, there you are. I'll make you uh, full screen here. Yeah, he was. Uh, 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 anyway, so so John is uh, very involved in uh, outreach, and he has his own YouTube channel. Uh, it's called uh, What's Your YouTube Channel? Learn Learn to Stargaze. Learn to Stargaze, yeah. and he's a very prolific writer. And amongst the things that he he's the author of the Fifty Things to See series, which keeps on getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, but I'm going to focus on, because it's the moon, um, John wrote a book, 50 Things to See on the Moon, and I'm going to say I helped him with that. And it was a great project. So, um, and I want John to talk about two things. I want him to talk about his book. And I also want him to say a few words about the RESC Moon at Noon program coming up. So, John, over to you. Yeah, okay. Well, can you see me? Am I the highlighted screen? Because I, I just see Dave's face right now. I can uh, see you. Okay. Uh, yeah, so which one do you want to tackle first? I don't know. So uh, you want to talk about the moon and noon first. Let's do that. Sure. So starting, <laughs> starting April 1st at noon Eastern, so I guess that's one Atlantic. Um, uh, so it's Rask is putting on a show called Moon at Noon. And so it's a quick show. It's 30 minutes uh every week i believe and it's gonna run for i think 10 weeks i'd need to check and but basically the goal is to get everyone that watches the show to get their i don't have the certificate i just have the program here to get their explore the moon certificate and so basically we're going to walk you through every target that you need to get to get your explore the moon and we're going to have a lot of fun at the same time so we'll be doing like Trivia, I, I wanna talk about like all the cool spaceships that went to the moon, uh, where they landed, um, if they crashed, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, all at the same time, getting you out in the evenings with your telescope or binoculars, observing the moon and getting those certificates, whether it's the binocular certificate or the telescope uh, certificate. And I've actually been, I don't have the certificate yet. So my goal for the next few weeks is to hit every target on the list. So I've been out every night actually going through with my, uh, I have this one from 2016, I guess. And um, so I haven't missed a night except for the snowstorm. And I've been uh, documenting all my progress here. Let's show you some of this. My, my beautiful handwriting, which Dave says is, is equal to his. But basically you just wanna prove that you've seen all these features. Um, and then after you've seen all, there's 70 or 80 features that you need to see. Something well, like that. It's around a hundred for the telescope. Yeah. Okay. A hundred, hundred features. Then, then you get your certificate and you have a lot of fun along the way. Um, so well, everyone, yeah, it's tune in moon at noon. Um, you can go live and answer, and we'll have like Q and A and stuff and we'll respond to comments. It'll also be streamed on YouTube, and then you can watch it uh, after the fact on YouTube as well. So it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. So I've been out there with a 70 millimeter, $100 telescope, <laughs> trying to replicate sort of the worst case scenario. And um, I, I'm still having fun. So, and Dave, the second thing you wanted me to talk about was the book for a second. The book, the book, yeah. And, and am I coming clear? I'm not like too delayed for you guys? No, uh, no maybe on Facebook, but that doesn't okay. matter. Um, yeah, so I don't know. It was three years ago, I think Dave and I got together in a pub in Dartmouth and I, I to, to meet for our first meeting of that. And I was like, we're gonna write a book about 50 things to see on the moon and it's gonna be great. And um, so basically we, we put it together, long story short, it got published by Formac Publishing it got picked up by Celestron and packaged with all their beginner telescopes for a year. Uh, and I blame this book for the Simon Newcomb Award in 2020. But we had a lot of fun putting it together and I wanted to address some of the challenges that people face uh, when they observe the moon. And you guys just talked about this with having to find maps 
for the different telescopes. So you've got your regular view, like a binoc with binoculars, or if you've got an image erect diagonal, which uh, most sort of sub $200 telescopes have. But if anyone's using um, something that's mirror reverse, like a, re a good refractor or a, a schmidt cassegrain with a, with a diagonal, you're gonna need another map. Um, and the other thing that can get confusing is if you're using a Newtonian or a Dobsonian, the review is rotated 180 degrees. So that's gonna give you a headache if you're trying to you know, do one of these programs. And so what we did when we put the book together is we provided all three views. So every page has binoculars, Newtonian um, reflector, or sorry, refractor. And even all, and even the maps, when we do um, the lunar, lunar seas, we've got three, oops, there's your summary of your targets, yeah. So we've got all three views, really quick reference. So anyone that doesn't have this book, uh, you should pick it up because people really love it. They can spend a year on it. And um, it says 50 things, but a lot of like the gang of four is one thing. So you've probably got about 100 targets in this book as well. You can't quite use it for Explore the Moon because there's extra targets in here and it's missing targets from Explore the Moon. Uh, and that's mostly just a function of the way that I wrote it. I wrote it by observing the moon every night for about six months. And I just documented what targets stuck out to me the most and what, what did I find most interesting. And that's, for the most part, that's what made it into the book. So. John, the question is, where can you buy your book? Anywhere. So hopefully all the bookstores in Atlanta, Canada should definitely have a copy. Some of them run out. I know at Christmas they all ran out. Um, but of course, Amazon, uh, so the hard covers are shipped and sold by Formac here in Halifax, and then the soft covers are um, are Amazon. Okay. Are uh, yeah. So, and there's a Kindle version as well. But people uh, seem depending on the device. There's people have been hit or miss of whether they can like zoom into the craters or not. Some of the some of the some of the Kindles, on the phone don't let you zoom in. So I've had some feedback about that. So definitely you want that paperback or hardcover version. Okay, so, uh, another question is too, and I'll just preface it by making sure people are aware that what you see in a telescope, you won't see in binoculars. Uh, but the question from Cheryl Jeffers is, any suggestions for binoculars to use when observing the moon? So that's not a question for me per se, because I'm not a huge binocular observer. I tend to observe with 10 by 50s um, because my zoom binoculars that I use, I find them too bouncy when I get over 10x. So, I, I'll speak to that. Um, um, if you want to use binoculars, there is a binocular version of Explore the Moon, which only has 40 targets that you can see in, um, in uh, binoculars. However, um, it would be helpful if, because of the detail that you're looking at, um, most binoculars have a little screw off cap at the front that you can screw off and it exposes a, a socket and you can use a, a fairly inexpensive adapter to attach that to a tripod. So if you are using binoculars, I'm not saying you have to, but it would probably help if you got yes. mounted them on a tripod. And beyond that, it doesn't really matter too much what binoculars that you yeah. use. The, um, um, the higher power, the better for, for sure. But the higher power you go, the more shaky the view. So that's why the adapter is good. And then if you really have deep pockets, you can get image stabilized binoculars. But the, the cost of the binoculars are like 10 times more, like hundreds and hundreds of dollars. But um, uh, 10 by 42 image stabilized are $1,600. Yeah. So as I said. They're bloody so, awesome, though. They are. I've they are awesome. And Cheryl, Cheryl lives on my street. Cheryl, if you come down and visit you, I'll, I've got a, a bunch of binoculars here that I would uh, happily uh, let you have for a, a negotiable price. So. <laughs> <laughs> she said um, thank you. <laughs> uh, so, so thanks so much, uh, John. Uh, I remember the story a little bit differently than that, but uh, 
what I remember is we were goofing around one day and I said, hey, you know, we should do 50 things to see on the moon. And you kind of laughed. And then you went into a meeting with Formac and uh, they wanted oh, to publish, right. yeah. they wanted to publish yeah. your telescope book. And in the meeting, they said, okay, well, well that's okay. What's your next book going to be? And, and you were kind of, I think you were like caught off guard. And I think you mumbled something about, well, we got this idea for 50 things to see on the moon. And they said, the way you told it to me anyway, they said, great, you know, I'd like to see an outline in two weeks. And a, and, a, and, a, <laughs> and then you called me up and said, hey, we're writing a book. <laughs> yeah, you're going way back in time now. I know, but it, yeah, that was, uh, it, it was pretty exciting. And was eight books ago for me, I think. I know. And, and I went, <laughs> the first thing I went to do is I went to explore the moon. I said, we have 50 things to see on the moon. And I went down and I wrote down all the things that were in the uh, binocular version, right? And a couple of other things. And I said, here, this is, this is where you start. Now, in the end, you had some other things that you liked. But I think because of that, the book is actually, if you're going to do Explore the Moon by Binoculars, John's book actually covers all of the things that are in the RESC observing program. So if you want to do it by binoculars, John's book is not a bad way to go. Yep, and you get some cool stellar facts along the way, so. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, anything else, anything else for me? Um, I think what we should do now is maybe go back to Dave Lane and have another look at the X and see how things have moved along in 20 or 30 minutes. Okay, so right a sec here to turn it on. Uh, I guess we gotta get rid of, rid of that. That over there. And move Mini Ralph in place. What happened? It's just become too big. You haven't shared your screen yet, Dave. Oh, that'll help too, won't it? Um, hmm. The challenge the is to find, technology. Yeah, the challenge is to find where the heck the uh, Zoom window went. Zoom control. Ha ha ha. Well, can we go? Can the, how's um, Jerry? Jerry, can you can we go back to you while we're waiting? Oh, I got it. Found it. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, so so that's a, the the fresh picture, the most recent one, eight thirty seven. So uh, that's now, yeah. So what I see here is that things haven't progressed a whole lot, and there's a good reason for that. Um, the the moon the moon goes around the Earth in about thirty days, and it and it um, it it shows the same face to the earth. So that means it's spinning on its axis every 30 days. So whereas the earth spins once a day, the moon is spinning 30 times slower. And that means that on the moon, sunrise takes place 30 times slower than it does on earth. So it does take a while for these things to unfold. And in the few minutes we went off to talk to John, nothing much has changed. Although you can see, you can see a few things around the X starting to poke out of the darkness. So rather than kind of, this is like watching paint dry. So I think what we need to do, Dave Lane, yeah. uh, what we need to do is maybe do a little tour along the Terminator and pick out a few more um, objects that we can point out to people. Yeah, just going to adjust the contrast so we're seeing the yeah, full... well that, yeah. The Lunar V is visible tonight. Yeah, you could... Uh, yeah. Do you want to go north? So let me, get a, let me just do a... If I gotta take a full view. Stop the auto. Take a full frame. By the way, uh, I did do the calculation and it works out to 55 kilometers is the diameter of the X based on its angular size today, given the moon's distance today. 
Okay, um, that sounds about right. Okay, so I will just uh, just do a zoom in on the full moon first. Take a single picture. By the way, for those who are watching, this is being these images are being taken by a four inch, hundred millimeter diameter Teleview Genesis refractor in my backyard. That's actually known as the Mini Robotic Observatory, and you can use that observatory yourself if you wish. Just Google Mini Robotic Observatory, and you can sign up. Can, okay, can where we, can we can we observe the moon with the? Uh, you can, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, so where are we headed? Uh, north of where we were. Uh, could you so we, we make it a little bright? Yeah, make it a little brighter. I would say about halfway to the north that we should be able to see the V. Yeah, I can see it there, right in the middle at this point. Somewhere here. Higher. Higher. Stop. There. there. Right so, there. So if I just kind of adjust the contrast for that. Yeah, you can sort of see it there. There's the lunar V. Now, Kim Hay, is that what you call the lunar L? Well, there we are. People were speaking of the current, the, the lunar L. Is that this thing here, maybe, or something? I don't know. I was waiting for somebody who. Hi, Dave. Yes. Yeah. No, I found it lower. Okay. So it was like a backwards L, actually. Okay, I don't know that one. So there's yeah. the that's the V. Yeah, I had the V. So while we're talking about these things, so the, these are they, there's a special name for these effects. They're called clair obscure, which is I think French for light and dark. It's a it's a light and dark contrast phenomenon. So you have to have the lighting just so in order to see these objects the, the way they're in their ideal form. And um, a, a lot of veteran lunar observers, uh, you know, they don't they don't think much of this. They think this is like just I don't know what, but. Uh, because I guess of their fleeting nature. Anyway, they, anyway, a lot of people seem to enjoy l l watching the Terminator and seeing these things come and go. So the uh, other Randy Dodge says the L is right down on the bottom. On the bottom, like yeah. the south. Yeah, it's below the lunar. It's south of the lunar X. But oh, okay, but you've got a really cool feature there in the center, right beside the V. Is I call it the Archer's bow, but it's that, is that, that this, this the little uh, line right here. That's yeah, because I think that was the lava tube, and then the middle one is where it collapsed. In that's the hy that's hygienus and hygienus rill, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And I forget if that middle crater thing is what's called a skylight, and that's when the lava tube collapses in yeah, like this, like a sinkhole. Would be. Oh, you mean up here or? Oh, no, down the the rile, right? Yeah, um, this, this one in between this little thin one. You mean or? Yeah, so they like Rima Rima hygienus. Hygienus. hygienus and hygienus crater yeah hygienus. yeah maybe someone um, could look up hygienus and see what the history is on it but i i just found out about or at least was re-reminded of lunar skylights and if you see images from the lunar reconnaissance orbiter of them they look really 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 cool like you could just put a lid on it and then you'd have your lunar base you could have your city in this underground thing with the with you know just the top capped off. Uh, so it's sort of a fun thing to Google. So what makes it a highlight instead of just a regular crater? Well, it's a, it's called a skylight, like in a house, because you can, it's when there's this big underground cavern. Okay. And then, the roof, and then the roof caves in in a circle. And so you basically have this skylight into a, into a, into an underground cave. I see. Um, yeah, it, it says hygiene, hygienist isn't considered a crater at all, and instead may be the result of a collapsed volcanic feature, a caldera, where overlying material on a possible magma chamber sunk down after drained out its lava load. So that's yeah, what, what he, what he said. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but what's, what's neat is if, if you Google a bunch of them, some of them look 
spectacular. They're really cool. I, I doubt you can see any with that sort of detail from Earth, but with the spacecraft photos, they, they look really fantastic, like like place you'd want to visit. <laughs> So the lunar sea, the small lunar sea, which is just north of that, is Mare Vaporum, which is the sea of vapors. Of course, the lunar seas aren't seas at all. Um, but when people first started looking at the moon, they imagined it was like another kind of earth and they saw the dark, um, roughly oval, um, patches on the moon, they assumed that they were seas. The other parts of the moon obviously looked mountainous and the seas looked flat. And so they called them seas. That's why they have names like Mary Vaporum and Mary Tranquilitatis. And, um, but what they turn out to be is uh, very large impact craters that were formed um, from large objects and at a time when the lunar mantle was still liquid and these big impact craters, there would be these big impacts. So there would be big craters and then the magma from within the moon would come up through the cracks and flood these big craters. And, and then since that time, there hasn't been as much bombardment. So you don't see very many craters within uh, the, the Mare. And, and the ones that you do see look very young. They're, they're very sharply defined uh, and haven't, haven't been subjected to a lot of um, degradation. So they're the younger craters on the moon. So when I say like probably just about a, a billion years old rather than three billion years old. So there's, there's no weather on the moon. So nothing really, uh, nothing really uh, changes. Uh, so the degradation comes just from impacts of smaller bodies that just kind of wear the walls of craters down. So that crater you see just north there is called um, um, Man Manilius. It's very, very round, very sharp edge. That's a, a, a relatively young crater that's come along since the Mari was formed. So the other thing that was uh, somebody asked about, I think Randy asked if we could go and look at um, uh, a crater in the north. Um, trying to remember, it starts with a C. Randy, help us out. You wanted to see. It's Cassini. Cassini, yes. And Cassini is wonderful because Mr. Cassini didn't even put it on his map. You have to only, you can only see it when you have this grazing sun angle. Um, is that so? It, it, the, the earliest map, moon maps didn't record it. So Cassini is farther south. You have to go north. Cassini is uh, farther north. Um, it's, yeah. you, see, you see those twin craters? It's a little bit to the left of those. There so we, need to, we, we need uh, farther over. We need to brighten it up there. It's near the Terminator. Oh, is it this thing? No, it's below that. But we need more light. We need more brightness. It might be that one. There it there. is. There just it is. Just at there. the bottom. This one here or this yeah. one here? No, that one that you just saw. That one. That, that's Cassini. That one. Uh, yeah, that's a bit pixelated. Um, and it, it's not fully illuminated yet. But Cassini is interesting because there's a secondary crater right inside that you can just barely see the edge of now. it's yeah. So basically, it's got some walls which are casting shadows so you can see the eastern wall of it there yeah our pixel um, resolution is about uh three kilo about three less than three just a little, a little bit less than three kilometers is the size of a pixel so so randy there's cassini you were asking to see that not much to look at at the moment uh, but over to the uh, over to the right are a, twi a pair of craters. The one at the top is Aristoteles. This one here. And uh, yeah, and the one below it is Eudoxus. And that, those are very prominent. Uh, I believe those are in Explore the Moon. 
they are. Whereas Cassini may or may not be. I'm not sure about um, Cassini. Uh, but certainly Aristoteles. I have a question are. on Facebook uh -huh. from Phil Parslow. He says, are there any more good clear obscure features at different times of the month to see? There are a few. Uh, I just can't recall them off the top of my head. The uh, Amelia Earhart crater is visible in this view, which most people don't know about. One of the one of the women craters. Yeah, and I, that got made official a couple of years ago, 2015. I don't see it on my um, moon atlas. Maybe maybe it's yeah, been it's, updated. It's, 20, it's 2015, and it was only they've only defined. You can see the feature on the screen here. It's to the about at least on my screen, an inch to the right and down a bit from Aris, Aristotle, the bottom of the two. That's Eudoxus, the bottom. You can't. So you mean right down the No, no, it doesn't. You're not. It doesn't look naturally like a crater. Um, you'd have to. You'd have to almost Google it and then and then cross reference. But so it pro it probably has a again a secondary crater name. It might be Eudoxus something like a letter name. No, it's big. It's as big as one of those other. Oh one so yeah so it doesn't have a secondary one it's you know about 100 kilometers across i think okay yeah, um, i have no idea what it is so yeah i i see on the lunar atlas map i see a, a kind of a depression that looks fairly big but it's not labeled yeah here i could uh can i cassini is by the control way. from aha uh -huh. John Lee is, is requesting control of my screen. Uh -huh. Aha, well, let me do it. Here, I'll just circle it if it lets me do it. I let you do it. Okay, I think it's it's this depression right here. I don't I, see anything. The cursor isn't moving. Oh, it's not moving. Oh, there we go. Okay, that thing there? there? No, it's my well, that's mouse, Ale mouse that's, in a different place. That's called Alexandra, according to my map. Uh, I'm telling you, my my. My cursor on my screen is not where Dave's cursor is. I see two cursors. Okay. Okay. So you see mine going in a circle? Yeah, but I, according to my map, it's called something. Oh, now it's moved over there. That's Berg. Okay. So the one that's moving is Dave. The oh. one that's going in a tight circle is me. I'm not. It, it's not appearing. Okay. Never mind then. So how yeah, do I get my control of my computer back? <laughs> Here, I'll give it. No, no, no. It says waiting for John to control your screen. So I've given you permission, but it hasn't. You haven't taken it. Oh, you can control Dave's screen. Okay. I don't think it's. It says. Uh, it says I am, but it's. Here, I'll just stop. Okay. It was a, val <laughs> a valiant effort. I've I've got it pointed out on um on my Learn to Stargaze website under downloads. I've got a, a map with all the craters. Okay, in I'm seeing two cursors now, so one of them's got to go. Wait, there. I shut mine off. Okay, it's gone. Must be a big delay here. So can you can Dave can you move your cursor around? No, yeah, it's come, come back. Okay, I put I'm on the Eudoxus, the, the, the big crater. Yeah. So where am I going? Well, the, uh, I don't know where you're going. I'd like you to go to the right. And that one there, Berg. Um, I'm not so sure. Yeah, it's Berg. Oh, it might be. It might be. But it's in a lake. Lacus well. mortis. The, the 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 lake of death. But uh, uh, but farther along, there's another pair of craters right here. Hercules mm -hmm. and Atlas. And so I'm pretty sure those are in Explore the Moon. Yep. And here. above that, near the limb is endymion uh above that pair atlas there's a a bigger crater right there, there endymion it's it's got a bit of a dark floor um and dave cassini yeah. is in the telescope version of explore the moon okay oh i'm pretty sure it's there yeah. oh no i wasn't sure yeah, yeah. I, i'm just surprised that randy thinks it's hard to find because i don't I don't find that it's uh, that it disappears, like he said. But um, uh, it, no, go back to the it Terminator. Wasn't though. something they saw in the 17th century. Uh, well, I can okay, I accept that. 
because it is a, it's, it is a little bit. Okay, so there's there's a horizontal um, rift uh, on the current there. So right there, the the mountains north and south of that spot. Uh, okay, we lost our cursor. Yeah, I'm just trying to make the contrast a little bit. Yeah, better there. Um, yeah, anyway, good. That's yeah, good here. Yeah. yeah. So the mountains that are running north south there are the Alps. And that uh, rift through the mountains that he was pointing at uh, is the Alpine Valley, Valles, uh, whatever that whatever that works out to be, uh, Alpinus or Valles. Alps. <laughs> the, uh, that's the Alps Mountains and the Alpine Valley. Yeah. Now um, that the Alps, I think, might be in the binocular version but the alpine valley is only in the telescope version because it it for a short while we had it in the uh binocular version but some of the some of the testers said they really couldn't pick it out so we took it took it out it's not really a binocular object but maybe under exceptional circumstances shall we take a swing down to see if we can find the l that randy dodd suggested was near the bottom? yeah yeah do that like let, let me just see if there's something else to look at before we go though um, I'll just say before we go, uh, that dark area north of the Alps there is Mare Frigoris, the Sea of Cold. Um, but yeah, okay, go go down and uh, go to the south limb, I guess. Well, there's the V. Uh, yeah, and by the way, I uh, I put a link in. This is Alan from Kitchener Waterloo. Oh yeah. Uh, about the uh, Claire Obscure uh, list. Okay, thank you for that. In the chat, in the chat, right. Yeah, that's really helpful. Thank you. Oh, there it is. What, the L? Right there. Right there. Oh, yeah. Okay, I didn't know that one. The lunar L. Is that in the list, Ellen? I have no idea. I don't know that list myself yet. <laughs> oh, you were trying to mm. fool us that you were an expert. <laughs> no, no, no. I just, I just found it uh, about half an hour ago when, uh, okay. when we were talking about it. Uh, yeah, these don't, these things don't show up so much on my Moon Atlas because it doesn't really do the uh, illumination that well. But let's try to figure out where it is, uh, what craters it's near. Um, so there's a couple of overlapping ones here. Few, few yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to get uh, oriented here. It's very busy. This is the what's called the Southern Highlands. There's not any uh, mare around there. There's just like one crater piled on another one, and I'm trying to get my orientation. Um, Dave. Yeah. Um, I can make out where Moralicus, if that's how you pronounce it, is. Yeah. And then you've got. Uh, sort of just below to the left of that at about uh, seven, eight o'clock, you've got the pair of the Lacetus and Heracles. Yes. There's a little trio there, almost on an equilateral triangle. Right. And then that L is just, again, that same sort of distance away from there. And it, yeah. Luke, maybe that would be forming it? Uh, it's hard to say. It really is hard to say. Uh, I only just learned about it this minute. Um, but yeah, so Dave Lane, yes. is that, is that your cursor there? Yeah, right Mo here. Okay. Yeah. You've, you've, can you move it back to where it was and yeah. go up just a tiny bit, the big crater there? Yeah. I believe that is Stofler. And, uh, the one that's kind of encroaching on it at four o'clock is Faraday and the one next to it over a bit to the right is Morolicus. And that has some secondary craters inside, some tiny secondary craters. Now, some of those things might be an explorer of the moon. Yeah, um, there are a few little ones there. Uh, Morolicus might be, and maybe Stoffler. I don't know. I don't know it like the back of my hand. Um, I'm looking at the list here. And Boy, the seeing is very unstable tonight. 
it was seemed it seemed better before well not only is i mean it's not sure each image is not bad but you can see that it shifts several pixels and that's not the drive doing that yeah So some of those craters we were just talking about, I don't even think they're in the list. Yeah, Derek's going Mar 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 is. It's called a large crater with terraced walls, mm -hmm. and it's and it's and it's uh, indicated as uh, on QD minus one, which it is in fact because tomorrow is the tomorrow is the first quarter, so today is QD minus one. Um, So I guess we, maybe we could throw it out to the group watching if there's any, anything that people know about that they want to see or where do we go from here? We've been doing this for about an hour. Um, I guess it's kind of open-ended. Yep. I mean, the Altai Scarp is nice on there. Yeah, okay. so why don't we move, move over and have a look at that? Where's that? It's centered on it. It's centered there now. So there's the three. Uh, there's the three. The trio of craters. Um, that these ones. That trio. Or is it the ones closer to the? That, that's the, those are Theophilly, Phyllis, Cyrillus, and Katerina, and they're next to Mari Nectaris. If you keep on going below Katerina, you can see the scarp there. It's that line, that bright line. Yeah, right about here. Three inches up and no, two. no, you're way oh. over. Oh, 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 this one here. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the Altai Scarp, and it ends up in a crater called Piccolomini. And that's the one with the raised. Yeah, it's center. got a, it's got a center. So those things are pretty common in craters. If you if you bang something into something that's uh, not so hard, there's a crater a crater created. And then there's a plume of material that goes up and then it falls back down. And so you get a lot of craters with central peaks because of that. Um, so yeah, Altai Scarp is looking really nice. The, the sun's catching that really good. Um, and uh, up, up from Piccolomini on the edge of Mare Nectaris, there's an interesting crater there, which is, um, partially flooded. Do you see that, Dave? Relative go, to where? Go from Piccol Piccolomini at Is the that... end of Altai Scarp. No. Oh, go, to Pic go to oh, Piccolomini. Go here. Okay, and yeah. then go up and a little bit to the right at okay. the edge of the Mare. And keep keep on oh, going up there. To the Two right. Two o'clock to the other the, right. The other right there. That one. Uh, no, the big one. There's a big oh, one there. This... Looks... Like okay, that? So, so that, yeah, that's that's very interesting because that crater there is Fractosaurus. And I that crater, and it's pretty decrepit. So that crater was there. And then when the, uh, when the basin flooded with um, basalt or whatever it is, um, the, 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 the land was sort of sloping. And what happened is that the, the magma flowed into that crater and it's uh, partially um, flooded. It's a, and, it, and, and its dark floor is the same as the, the Mare. So, so what happened there was that it was a little bit tilted because of the impact. And then, and then the magma flowed in there and gave it a dark floor. And you can just barely see the tips of the old crater walls sticking out of the Mare. So the southern part of that is well defined, but the northern part of it looks almost missing. And there's these the little Crate, you know, there's little bits sticking up. So that's what we call a flooded crater. And yeah, that's a little, that's a little too zoomed in. <laughs> uh, what happened there? Oh. I don't know. And that uh, in the middle of the Mare. Oh. <laughs> that's coming up because someone is actually submitting observations to the MRO and it has to look up the positions of the object. So it flashes <laughs> up BCU to find uh, the positions. Oh, OK. So we'd... Uh, okay. we've got a challenging question for you. For me? Oh, for what? 
what percentage of the craters on the moon remain to be named? And also, how many have been named after women? Oh, I'm going to defer the second question to John Reed. I'm going to I'll say the first, the first question is most of the craters on the moon are not named because there's, there's, there's thousands of craters that and some that we can't even see. So uh, I'm not really sure what's behind that question, but yeah. only the, the biggest is 1.8. What that have been named? No, named after women. Percentage named after women is 1.8 percent. Not not high, but yeah, I think any, anything over five kilometers is named something like that. But uh, oh. some of those names just like secondary craters with with letters like yeah. So when I think when the IAU meets, they add some. Yeah. Every time. Now, normal they... normally craters are named after dead scientists. But I think they've broadened that out. I don't think enough of us have died yet. Um, well, there's three that are after, um, um, what do you call it? Explorers? Uh, <laughs> astronauts, along with one of the astronauts' wives. Yes. Yes, I'm that's from, true. Um, that area, the moon? Yeah, the, those are special cases, but modern special cases. But yeah, yeah. There are, the, the exceptions are the modern ones where. I mean, Amelia Earhart, you know, is, uh, I mean, obviously like she, it's a, for, for, as an explorer and uh, I guess we never did figure out where that one was, right? Um, but, uh, oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, only I could see it. Um, you've got, well, you do have Mount Marilyn in the center. Well, I have to redraw here because it's the moon drift. So I had to re, do a re, Recrop. So Mount Marilyn was another one that was, it had another name. It was this part of the mountain that was shaped like a triangle and they sort of used it as a guidepost. I, I don't know that one. Where's that? Um, so it's... Come on, the guy's submitting observations like crazy here. If you take the lunar, the lunar L, that, you know, yeah, sort yeah. of order of craters I used to find the Apollo 11 landing site, and you just follow the oh, not this L, <laughs> not the not the L we were just looking at. Yeah, so this is uh, in the sea of in the sea of tranquility. Yes, there's an L that, shape. That's the sea of tranquility yeah. there. And so, if you zoom in on the left side, there's a, a bunch of craters make an L. Uh, um, so I yeah. Yeah, I remember seeing this in your book, but I don't know which ones you mean. So just a little, it's in the sea. Oh, yeah. So there's your L. You're right on the L right there. Top of the L. Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Down. Down. And to the. Um, oh, there's right. a pair yeah. there. There you go. Yeah. So that pair is part of the L. So about um, if you follow those for about a centimeter, that's so right there. That's Apollo 11. I have a big screen. Yeah. Yeah. So right there, that's your Apollo 11. And, but if you go to the other side of the sea now, but following a straight line. On the other the side, like east. Yeah. Uh, okay, you're, half, you're halfway there. So now you're going to. Oh, over there. Okay, go down. Down a little bit. And you'll see a tri triangular mountain. I think that's it. Down right a little bit. Right oh, there. I think I see it on, on the map, moon map. Yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty sure that's Mount Maryland. And so that got named in 2017, I believe. So you're saying it's Mount Marilyn, like Marilyn Monroe, Marilyn? After Lovell's wife. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so it got mentioned in Apollo 13. And, and I was listening to one of the recordings of Apollo 11, and you can hear them talk about it as they fly over it, because it's their sort of guide, one of their guides to know that they're over the landing site. Yeah, the, the three astronauts were Aldrin, Collins, and Armstrong. Those are the three um, cr small craters that are there, and they're adjacent to the L that you pointed out, John. Yeah. Although they don't show up on, on that particular uh, view. Because I think they're only about a, they're less than a mile, or they're about a mile. Oh, yeah. In diameter. Another one of my favorite features there is the Marsh of Sleep. Am I saying that right? And so um, that's in the, it's a really bright patch in the sea. And it's- Alasomni? 
Yeah, so it's on. So if you just take your mouse and go to the right, and you'll see a bright patch in the sea. It's huge. Right like up, that. right. Up. So just go up. Yeah, oh, that. Like this, this. All that, yeah. So that's the mar. I think that's the marsh of sleep. Oh, palasom palasomni. Yeah, it's right next to Mari Christium. That, that sort of gray area. Yeah, that's. Yep. That's I always great. thought that was really pretty. And then the crater on the other side is a ray crater, that one. Yeah, and it sort of shoots out this beam of light away from this. That's, that's Proclus. Yeah. And you can see this. So those rays are, um, so Proclus is, again, another young crater that's uh, come after a lot of the other things were formed. And as a result of the impact, some of the material has spewed out in a number of rays. Two of them are going into Mare Crisium, and another two are more or less to the to the left and they they sort of delineate the edge of uh, the, the marsh marsh of dreams. So to me that implies that, that the impactor came in at a certain angle and hit it at an angle and it it, it created some of this ejecta but that darker area was not covered by the ejecta. So I would say it must have come in from that direction. Wouldn't yeah. you say something like that? Hard to say. I mean, that's that's some cool trivia is that almost no matter what angle the craters come in or the asteroids come in, the craters are round. And that's because the asteroids are so much smaller than the crater they make. And so it's almost just they come in and it's. Yeah, they explode. Um, okay. But I but so, I think the ray the ray patterns may uh, reflect something about their angle of incidence. Yeah. Wouldn't like, the um, wouldn't the height of the crater walls also give you a clue as to what direction it came from? No, because that would be the resulting explosion. Yeah. Um, so it's like you deposit a whole bunch of energy and you get this big crater. Yeah. The other the other really cool thing, um, a lot of those double double craters are sometimes caused by double asteroids, like asteroids that come in looking like snowmen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the more we, the more asteroids that are observed. I just lost oh. Dave. What? Are you here, Dave? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. I was going to say you. more, uh, you know, quiet. as we get near more and more asteroids, and image them up close, so many more of them than we ever expected are ended up being. Your voice is really low, Dave. Something something happened to your audio. Uh, is it just you or the other, or the rest of us the same? Oh, the same? Hang on, maybe it's me. You sound okay to me. Okay. Okay, I've got a I've got a bad analog connector here with my headphone. No, it's good now. Okay. What I was saying was that, uh, you know, 20 years ago, we didn't know there, know there were any double asteroids uh, or asteroids that have moons, but it seems like more and more and more asteroids that are observed up close end up being, whoops, there's somebody, um, asteroids that are observed up close, we actually find out that they are actually moon, or uh, asteroids with moons around them or double asteroids. Yeah. And that's a, and, that's a pretty new new uh, phenomenon. To, to go back to uh, the discussion about Amelia Earhart, uh, Eric Briggs notes that the park in Amelia Earhart's birthplace in Kansas has a tree planted in it whose seed was flown to the moon on Apollo 14. Oh, cool. One uh, thing that some of you may not be aware of is that there is a possible uh, meteorite crater in Nova Scotia in the Annapolis Valley, and it's uh, it uh, is actually if it is a, if it is a, a meteor crater, it's likely a double. It's a double crater, um, overlapping. South, yeah, of Middle, south of Middleton. I saw uh -oh. a presentation on that. Yeah, it's called the Astrid. Well, in, informally, informally called the Astrid crater, named after the daughter of the. Uh, geologists at Acadia that discovered it back in the 19, early 1990s, I think, or late 80s. I think it's I think it's underwater now. I think it's it's in a reservoir that's um, belongs to Nova Scotia Power, and it's dammed. Yeah, Nova Scotia um, 
uh, story goes that he was studying aerial photographs and noticed this odd looking feature and didn't do anything about it. And when he finally got around to going, going over and looking, he, re he found out that they'd flooded the land post, which actually helped because he went there in the winter time and used the equipment sort of rolling on a nice smooth surface so he didn't have to, you know, deal with the lake situation. So, so part of the lore about that crater at one time before it was flooded, wasn't somebody using it as a corral for his cows or something? I think that's what Roy Bishop had said, told us, I think, as part yeah. of that. Yeah, it was actually sort of a natural fence. Yeah, I've, um, I can't remember the guy who talked about that. I think he passed all of his stuff over to a younger professor at Acadia. Yeah, his name is George Stevens. Yeah. And before he retired, he actually packed all his stuff up in a box and it's sitting in a cabinet at SMU near my office. Oh. But he also, uh, I believe he left a copy of, every, of his work with uh, uh, at the university. And I, I did hear that there's a, a younger geologist that's picked it up, but I don't know what. What's I think his name might be Ian something. You're right. Uh, yeah, it sounds. Funny. And and I, w I remember I went to a talk at uh, the Bl Blomiden Naturalist Society uh, at Acadia, and I heard him speak about this. Very interesting. So Judy. Yes. Yeah. It's called the Bloody um, Creek Crater. Also, the Bloody Creek Crater. I just want to know uh, when when are we thinking about wrapping this up? That is totally up to you. I've got it slated for four hours, so it's up to you as to how long you'd like it, Dave. Well, I'm not going to make it four hours. I wouldn't expect so, no. So I'm going to say it's 9.18. I'm, I'm going to suggest, unless uh, people really want to keep going, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say we should wrap this up at 9.30, 10 minutes from now. Um, it, it looks like the, the limb um, by Chrysium there is, is librated, but you can actually see the... Uh, couple of oceans or uh, seas there yeah um mary underum for one whoops yeah it's a bit too bright dave oh uh, so you were oh we're looking over towards the uh the limb, limb. The limb. Sorry, yeah the limb. it's actually not a favorable libration for those seas but it, yeah you can see uh, uh you can see under them <laughs> i always used to call it underarm that's what it looks like <laughs> And spumens is the other one that's below it that you can. Yeah. Is that like this one here? Or? That, that's underarm. <laughs> underarm <laughs> there. Under, and spumens below that. That's crisium there, right? Is it? Correct. Yeah. 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 So, what I'd like to do, Dave, in the last few moments, and if people want to carry on, that's fine, but um, I'm fading a bit here myself. So, uh, in the last few moments, I'd like to go back and look at the X once more, see how things have progressed. Yeah. So let's just. Uh... I've got the X on my screen there. You brighten it up. So, so it's still hanging in there. It's been about an hour and it's still showing up. But, you know, you can see, I think you can start to see the surrounding floor, crater floors and stuff are beginning to get illuminated. But Jerry's uh, zoomed in there too. I can't see Jerry's. If you um, have gallery view down the side and you scroll through the uh, people, you'll be able to see. Oh, yeah. I'd so like to know how we did it yesterday. We, we well, had... I'm sharing the screen, so you should see him because I, I it is on my screen that I'm sharing. Uh, not upper, so much. Upper left, can you not see the zoom window nope. there? Nope. I'm going to go to gallery and uh, I'm not even seeing it in gallery. I don't see, I see Jerry. I don't see his. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm down, I think. So what There's... you have to do is, is use the arrows above and below and scroll to where he is. Oh, okay. I see it now. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I could make that bigger. Mm. It's, it's very prominent though. I, I mean, maybe that's because it's kind of compressed in size, but uh, very nice. Magic marker I'm using. Um, it's the Sharpie version. Eh? So one thing I'm seeing now is there's a little crater at the end of one of the arms of the X, the, what I'm going to call the Northwest arm of the X. There's a crater 
appearing that wasn't there before. Oh, you know what I should do? I should find those links. Um, talk amongst yourselves while I do something here. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, final final questions at this point, probably, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, people can carry on as long as they want, but I'm I'm fading. Um, I, I think well, I think I'd like to wrap it up. Uh, um for me anyway my involvement someone asks is a double crater formed by a single meteorite how close is it to the ground when it splits which double crater so just in general i think so there's there's a i guess there's a couple ways to answer that some objects when like especially comets when they're going to impact a planet the planet's gravity will sort of spaghettify, spaghettify the object because they're not tightly bound. So they might be just dirt balls, right? So like if it's something was going to hurtle into Jupiter and it's a comet or something, it'll usually break it into separate pieces and then the pieces will hit individually. Or it may get disrupted on a previous pass close, not one that actually caused the impact. Yeah. So, so that's one way get you know or one possible way to get craters um but i some of the some of the asteroids either like like dave said either have a little moon and then so that pair will collide or you know they're they're in touch and they look like a snowman it's just two of them that are gravitationally um bound together so so since i said i was almost ready to bail as people are uh, thanking us and uh and um, saying how much they've enjoyed it. So I'm going to add to the chat here to everyone. I'm going to add a link to the article I wrote in JRASC. It's actually not the JRASC article. It's, it's my version of it uh, that I have in my Dropbox. But there, it's in the chat now. And it's essentially the same as the article in the Journal of the RESC, which came out in 2017, I think. Um, and it's, if you read that, it's everything you wanted to know about the expert were afraid to ask. And if you read, if you read that, and you do have more questions, I'd be most happy to respond to them. You can reach me, however, by email or what have you, Facebook. Uh, if you have any new questions or things that don't seem clear. Um, so thanks, people, for tuning in. Andy, um, Greg, uh, Afsha, nice to meet you all, and Kim. And I apologize. I've actually lost the video link to Zoom on this computer. Before we hang up, does anyone have want to have a try to get a quick view of the new Nova? Uh, sure, why not? Uh, which uh, is called Nova Cass. It apparently was about sixth magnitude. Um, do, you, do you know how to point your telescope, Dave? I'm sitting <laughs> in my office looking out the window, so um, I'm just kidding. It should be this object right there. But just we'll just aim at a bright star first, just to see. Well, it's it's slewing. Slewing, yeah. So the moon was in uh, Taurus just now, between the horns of Taurus. So for the people. Uh, out there, the lunatics. I don't know if it's supposed to be clear tomorrow night. The next uh, four nights, actually. But tomorrow night, you should be able to see the straight wall, which is uh, definitely an object. In the... So you'll see a whole bunch of new things next to the Terminator tomorrow. So John Reed should be able to rack up quite a few objects uh, tonight and tomorrow. After, after the first quarter, there's not so many objects. There are still a few, but 
if if you observe like three nights around first quarter, you would probably nail about twenty five percent of what you needed. So that, Is that object, it? that's uh, Cats. calf. So now we'll go to Nova Cass. There's lots to see in the other half. Whoa, Michael look at Day that. For the, uh, what do you call it? Explore uh, Isabel Williamson. Yeah, there's a lot. It's just that for some reason, uh, there's not so many in the Western part of the moon in Explore, Explore the Moon. I think yeah. it's because yeah. There's not as many craters, you know. I, I've been up four nights and I'm at about exactly the halfway point. And Holy, yeah. Well, we'll have to yeah. give you a special gold star for doing it the quickest. <laughs> the Messier. There's actually a star cluster there you can see. Uh, yeah. Let's do a 15 second exposure. Is that the owl cluster? Maybe. It is called. Oh, it's M52. Which is M52. Does it have a common name? Uh, NGC seven six five four. That's a less uh, that's, common name. <laughs> I meant like an English name. Let me, let me look it up. So these are raw images. So there's no cal. Actually, I can do a calibration. It's also close to the bubble nebula or something. Yeah. So it's this star oh, rate. Yeah, that's the salt and pepper cluster. Oh, yeah. yeah, so it's this star right there is, oh, yeah. the, is a Nova. And it was just discovered about two nights ago, two or three nights ago. Cool. And so, uh, so can you do any, uh, what do you call it? What's that fancy word for how bright things are? Photometry. Can you do any photometry on it? Well, I mean, we could do that live, right? We could uh, go back to ECU, zoom in close. Actually, what we'll do is we'll just uh, place a field target there so we can see. Oops. Uh, make it go north up. And we could take one of these stars, and that's magnitude 6.3. So that presumably is, I guess we get this right here. Uh, so that, so this star right there is this one. Hmm. Let me see. Okay. There's these, this line of amazing. You have to do star hopping off the screen here. I think these stars here are, are those. And then that star must be this one. So if I click on that star, it's magnitude 6.3. So all I do here is go uh, extract from image, click on that, and set that to be 6.3, apply it. And now all we have to do is go Assuming it's that one, six point. No, let's track it. No, that's not right. Distract from image. Aperture bigger. Click. Okay, now if we go there, seven point one. Wow. Tonight. So does that star have a name other than no like does it have a, a catalog oh. number be before it was a nova i don't know that i uh, know it did not so it was essentially a, a nothing star star two well i mean they may go back after the fact and look at deep you know deep images of that field and, but it and, but it wouldn't be sort of a typical star we would find well, in a well a nova, nova. A Nova, by definition, right, Dave, is like it's something dumping onto a white dwarf and then the white dwarf right. flaring up, right? Yes. Something like that. Well, yeah. I, I kind of knew that, but I, I guess, uh, so I the, guess the question was, was it was the star? What magnitude was the star before it became Nova? Yeah, I mean, in ECU, I, I could go turn on the U.S. Naval Observatory catalog, uh -huh. and, and which is which goes to about nineteenth magnitude. Yeah. So where are we at here? Uh, uh, and 
there's a 14th magnitude star nearby, but I suspect that if we took a long, I mean, you can see there's all kinds of fainter things here. Yeah, I think it would be pretty hard to find that casually if you just went out. Yeah, with what I don't know is is this position, this MRO9 Novacast 2021, that object was added by uh, an MRO observer yesterday. So oh. I don't, because they observed it last night. So um, you think that might be the Nova? No, what I'm saying is that it was discovered by somebody. Yeah. And then uh someone i guess i could look it up uh, number observer number nine uh what was in my mind here uh, i'm just curious now who it is so they they saw an announcement on the avso or something like that um List of observers number nine is so oh, Philip Romanov, who's a Russian uh, young man in his early twenties who lives on the west, uh, sorry, the east coast of Russia next to Japan, and he's an amateur astronomer extraordinaire, and he added this object to the database so that he could observe it last night. This isn't the homeless guy, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, wow. Yeah, he's using both BGO and Aero and MRO, all of them. Now doing mostly variable star observations and near-Earth asteroids and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, so, so no, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I guess we're getting to the point where I said I was going to fade away. Um, I just wanted to say before I tune out, I just wanted to thank everybody who tuned in and uh, participated in this. And I want to thank uh, Judy and um, Dave Lane, Jerry Black, uh, John Nangreaves, John Reed, all the people that contributed something or other. It was a fantastic evening. Uh, the other thing I want to say is that it's not too late. And uh, you, you still, if it's clear where you are, I mean, it is here you can go out and still observe the, the moon and the lunar X live through your telescope and binoculars uh, after this is over, hopefully. So especially if you're farther west. So uh, don't, uh, don't pass up the opportunity to see it for, for with real photons. <laughs> um, I'll probably, I'll probably hang around, but I think I'm going to stop talking and interacting and just We'll just uh, just coast at this point. So anyway, it's been a great uh, a great gathering, and I've uh, really enjoyed it. Sure. Um, I think we're kind of done with the moon. So if anyone wants to wants to have a look at some other object in the sky, just quickly, we can make the telescope move there. Otherwise, we'll probably. Uh, shut down and let the observatory run through its observations, which it has queued up for tonight. If we actually look and see what that is, it has uh, about, um, well, that's Aero, uh, Mini Ralph, uh, has about 17 observations in its, yeah, uh, in its queue. This fellow, Ra Rafa Barbera, is from Spain, and he saw a talk I gave about this telescope to the Toronto Center of the RESC and requested access. So he's queued up a bunch of uh, looks like galaxies or something like that tonight. So I think I'll just go to um, Something I was just curious about because I saw someone take a picture last night of M1, uh, M97. And I'm curious if uh, M97 and uh, M108 will fit in the same field of view. So if I center that, place a target. Oh, yeah, it'll fit. 
I don't know no. which Dave this is a Q2, but Fabian Pittman asked, Dave, I have ECU. What name can I use to search for that Nova? You can't because it wouldn't be in the uh, in the database. Um, if you go to uh, uh, aabso.org, which is the American Association of Variable Star Observers, likely there's a news item on their page, I would hope. Yeah, Nova and Cassiopeia. So it would give you the position position that it is at. So you could go over to any planetarium software and go and enter the, the hours, minutes, seconds, degrees, minutes, seconds to find out where it's at. Um, so that's what that is about. <clears throat> so let's uh, let's send it to that star there. And while you're doing that, Brian Smith has said I'll post M97, which is the Owl Nebula, and M108 tomorrow. So it must be moving. Well, yep, there it goes. This little guy slews really quickly. It's a Celestron Advanced Astro Master mount, pretty cheap mount, but pretty good. So we'll try five seconds unfiltered. And just in yeah. case people hadn't noticed, Dave uh, Chapman has provided the link to the Moon at Noon series on the Rask site. It's in the chat, so if you wanted to, uh, and if you lose that link, you just have to go to the main Rask website at www.rask.ca and look at their calendar starting April 1, and it should be there. You can register. And if you're wondering what this telescope looks like, um, just taking a 60 second picture, that's, uh, that's what we're using tonight. Uh, sitting on the deck beside my other observatory. Um, this is not mine, this actually belongs to, well, the telescope is mine, but the rest of the equipment belongs to St. Mary's University. And runs all the same software that, that automates the Abbey Ridge Observatory and this university's per capita observatory. It's all running the same, same code. Um, the nice thing about this little telescope is its field of view is, is big. It's about two by uh, one and a half by two and a half degrees, if I remember correctly. So you can fit in lots of stuff. So I calibrate on that. And there you go. Only a one minute exposure. And we've got the Owl Nebula there and the M108 Edge on Galaxy. I suspect that that will get shot in a color shot in the coming weeks. <laughs> um, maybe I'll just do one more unless there are any requests. I don't see the chat, so I can't. Um, haven't gotten any in the chat for this for Zoom, Dave. Yeah, okay. Um, Dave, Dave Chapman here. I'm still watching. Um, I was just wondering if anyone imaged uh, the Lunar X while we were observing it, or, or if it's on the list for anybody, uh, the moon, that is. Yeah, I forgot to hit save on any of those images. <laughs> That's OK. <laughs> I have quite a few, Dave. I've done some video imaging of it here while we've been uh, okay. uh, talking. So, Sest, I'll send you something. Yeah, it'd be nice to share something maybe on our listserv tomorrow, or maybe throw but something this, up at once. This is the um if one second here uh yeah i've i've got the first one done here where i slightly overexposed part of the moon seems like it'll be okay so uh okay once i get them in i'll send you one thank you yep and we'll i think we'll just uh no that's too low you can see on this uh planetarium screen this sort of aqua colored line is the approximate horizon of the observatory. So it's uh, this, it's, it's quite obstructed because it's sitting down on the deck and it's got the big observatory in the way uh, in front of it. There's a, 
I think this section from over here through here is largely the ARO dome blocking the view over in the southeast. Uh, no, it would be in the, no, I think that's this area here. There's a little bit of a duck. This is the house uh, through, this is the house through here. Yeah, I obviously I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> It's, a, it's, it's backwards is what's happening. Let's just take a, just before we're done, let's take a quick shot of uh, the Orion Nebula because that's always a, a treat. All right, last shot. Marine Newnham said NGC 2419. What in the heck is that? NGC 2419. <laughs> Search. Marie is our resident lunatic in KW Rusk. She says it's a distant globular. NGC 2419. 2419. Well, wow, look at that. 10.4 magnitude and it's 6.2. Actually, it's not bad. Uh, it's directly overhead. So what we'll do is we'll just leave that there. Oh. And there's the Orion Nebula. We'll do a log stretch on that, make it look nice for a second. Uh, stretch. Uh, let's do a GAN stretch. Unlimited. Actually, do a log. What the hell? There we go. Wow. Just a one minute exposure. And then we'll, we will just before we're done, we'll actually try this uh, little globular, globular cluster. It's probably about, what, maybe five or six times smaller in diameter than the Hercules globular, which of course is one of our brightest ones in the northern sky. So it's almost at the zenith. Um, it is close to the moon though. Notice, notice it's only about 30 degrees from the moon, so there would be a lot of inter interference from the moon. So let's take a 60 second shot of that. It literally takes a minute, does it? One minute. Well, it's a yeah, one minute exposure. Yeah. Ah. So you can see the, the little bar graph here moving across. And for those of you that are outside observing, the ISS is rising. Thanks, Andy. Okay. It's a small object, so it's that little tiny thing there. Hmm. Let's do a process, calibrate. Yeah, it is a very distant globular cluster. So the stars are basically not, basically not resolved. It looks like you can see a few, maybe a few towards the outer edge. Excuse me. So I think that's about it. 
Okay. Well, we will... it's, it's quarter to 10. Shall we call it a night? I think so. So we're going to go. Okay, so ISS is going to go through uh, Cassiopeia. <coughs> so we were. Uh... Yeah, so we should see it tomorrow morning if we look at the the all sky camera movie at the Burke Gaffney. Probably see it go through. Um, so we're going to start up the autopilot. And that'll cause it to do its thing. Okay, can we stop screen share? Yep. Thanks, Dave. Well, thank, thanks, Dave, so much for uh, being there and allowing us to see what you could see. Too bad we couldn't see much more with Jerry's rig that he had out in the back, but um, I think if you were able to see his little screen to any degree, you were able to see it. Yeah, it was, it was quite, uh, it was the longer focal length of the uh, Schmidt cast screen, even though it may not be any sharper, it appears sharper because the, the pixels are blurred, blurred out a bit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, in fact, I've been invited out to the backyard to go view the Lunar X before it disappears. So um, anyways, it'll give a, th a th thank you, Dave Chapman, for the information um, bringing us around and to John Reed as well, who showed us some new features on the moon and gave us a perspective as to how some of these features were actually formed uh, and why they appear the way they do. So thank you one and all for attending from coast to coast to coast. And hopefully if we host another event such as this, you'll join us once more. So thank you all. Thanks, Judy. Thanks, Judy. You're welcome. Thank you.